Hello and welcome to Any Combo Lords. Although today's live video is going to be more focused on some interesting computer things I want to share, which we'll do in my room as soon as the darkness strikes, since we have a little bit more sunlight before the darkness strikes, why don't we have fun chatting for a moment, looking at a few crazy bubbles in bubbles, if I don't destroy my computer with them accidentally. And then we can move from our bubble contraptions towards some other sorts of contraptions that are like these interesting math tools I downloaded on my computer. And um, really, I sort of just want to play with bubbles, but it is in a way tied into our interesting gadgets or contraptions theme because this generates fun bubbles to look at and we'll see other cool things to look at and investigate on the computer too. Uh, for anyone joining in the future, I'll probably on this stream and some other ones try and put some timestamps after of when I do different activities or when I'm ranting about a random thing before I move on to the next activity so that people can jump around if you don't have time to watch the whole streams because we always do get up to some fun activities. And to start off, why don't I make sure I got the chat pulled up and make sure that I got enough bubble solution for us to look at a cool bubble or two before it gets dark. And hello to everybody joining me and commenting so far in the chat. So with these cool bubbles we got, this is my favorite bubble device yet. And it is kind of silly that when you want to get good bubble tech, you are forced to have ones that look somewhat childish. They always come like being some dinosaur shaped gun or something. This is what the bubble tech looks like these days, but no complaints, you know, what's wrong with a little dinosaur? In any case, although my bubble machine can make a bunch of little bubbles and it's fun to just make your own homemade bubbles with whatever, like a broken clock or whatever, this thing has these double layers so it can make an outer bubble and a bunch of inner bubbles. And we're gonna look at a few of those because they're pretty beautiful. And I like playing around with this thing. Uh, really those bubbles and bubbles, it's a little hard to get them right to launch off the gun, but when they launch off, they entrance me. I'll just stare at the bubble filled with bubbles. It's otherworldly. So what we're gonna start with is you got this little disc. Fill that up with a little bubble solution. Maybe get a little grime off. And from there, we'll dip it in and try to aim it further from the camera for now. Uh, I know, and in fact, I'll put the camera a little further back for this because while we do our brief bubble extravaganza, um, I'll try and blast that direction. These bubble and bubbles are full of a lot of soap and I've seen them pop in a way where all the little bubbles pop too and it's like like a burst of soap water. So I'm not thinking my computer would like that. Uh, we'll try and aim this way. Now, check out how wild this is. Okay, so that one started to form. It didn't launch off of the gun. It's even cooler when they separate from the gun. And if YouTube starts getting automatic sensors about words or anything, we are only talking about bubble guns today. I am not, uh, I don't own, I don't recommend, uh, combo class is only, the only type of gun we, you will see in my video in this grade will be a bubble gun. So let's try and get one detached. That's when they're extra cool. And we'll only be doing this for a little bit. Oh, there we go. Whoa. Isn't that wild? All right, we're going to get one or two more before we switch activities because these are so fun. Ooh. And then it's still muddy on the ground, so some of them sort of like cluster on the ground and hang out. There's still like a little cluster there hanging. All right, one or two more. Ooh. 
Ooh. That's wild. All right, so I'm going to definitely need to use this at more random moments in the combo classroom. Just have that ready to launch a giant bubble filled with bubbles at someone. That would be a pretty wild greeting. Imagine I invite someone to come meet me here to film, and I'm like, all right, when you come through the back door, be ready. And the moment you walk through the back door, you're just hit with a bubble full of bubbles. What if I start walking into parties like that? Just walk in to make a dramatic entrance, just shoot a bubble filled with bubbles into the party before I enter. Too bad they're so soapy, I probably can't do that. Um, but in any case, this thing has a lot of fun potential. And as the darkness starts sinking in more, we're gonna move on to some other types of contraptions that are a little more digital. I will shrink myself soon as we transition zones and go to my room and look at some neat mathy tools. So first, if anybody has any thoughts or questions related to the combo classroom in our outdoor realm, now's your time to stop and ponder and enjoy the clocks because we will be transitioning inward very shortly. And hello chat, hello to you all. Um, as we transition inward, let me switch you guys over to a view of one of these fun tools that I got. So where I got these tools from is the site or organization or whatever called Wolfram, which is like this calculator thing called Wolfram Alpha, a Wikipedia-esque thing of sites, places called like Wolfram Math World and stuff. And it turns out they have a zone where a lot of people put up like creative commons, able to use cool little movable slider adjustable interfaces and demonstrations of a bajillion cool little math things. The type of things I might doodle numbers on a whiteboard about, but some of these they've built to have little like sliders and see where you're at for all sorts of different fun ways of visualizing it. And I have a few of those that I downloaded that we're gonna have some fun with today. And the first one I'll switch you over to while I transition inward will be fractions in different bases. And that's because we did a short recently here about how if we switch to base six, the fractions would be much neater. Basically related to how six has things with twos and threes related to factors are a lot better digested into it, whereas 10 has things with twos and fives are more spread out. It's better at digesting into decimals. But there's other reasons too. We could say that six has an easy time making things like one fifth and one seventh easier than, well, not one fifth easier than base 10. But compared to some other bases, the proximity of a number being like one under the base or one higher than the base can make those sometimes have an easier pattern as well. And so six lands at a really good spot. And a lot of people asked about 12. What, what about base 12 fractions? And my brief thought on that was that they are better than base 10. And by fractions, I mean the way that fractions have to turn into a decimal. And I'll be calling it a decimal, even though that is a term built for base 10, deci, deca. So it's a base 10 e word, but we're just gonna be using decimal today to keep it understandable in all these bases. When you turn your fraction to your decimal, um, how many of them need that infinite repeating tail? And apart from that, how many digits would it need to take if it's not infinitely repeating? And if it is infinitely repeating, um, then how long is the cycle? And we're going to visualize how um, base 12 is better than base 10, but not as good as base 6. So let me pull open this cool thing of 
fractions in different bases that I got from this zone called the Wolfram Demonstrations Project. I guess the Demonstrations Project is the name for this cool zone that I've started to download these cool tools from. Um, and as we go here, we can see, um, give a shout out to the fella who put it on here too. Um, let's shrink this. Do, 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 do. In fact, for a moment, we're going to make me minuscule because I'm going to move inside and you don't need to see that anyway. So over here, you see how we got denominator as a choice and base as a choice and the beginning of what the decimal for that fraction would look like. And it's starting on 15 here. Oh yeah, so I will give a shout out to the guy who put this up, which is... Do, 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 do. Oh, this was contributed by Stephen Wolfram, the guy who made Wolfram. Some of them were uh, contributed by someone else, but I guess the actual founder of the site made this one. That's pretty dope. So we're going to say base 10 for now, but let's look at some smaller fractions. And I want you guys to look at the one-sevenths while we transition inside, because these one-sevenths in base 10 are chaos. Now, it's this thing called a cyclic number that's inside there, because all of these have the same repeating cycle. So it's interesting what they do here. They all loop this six-digit string starting from a different point. But... And I'm moving us inside, so pardon if the noise is changing, but looking at the sevenths, you can see each of them have a string that repeats. It's the same string as each other, but starting from a different point. And that's related to how that first string, the one with the 142857, if we multiplied that by two, we'd get the string that started in two. And if we, um, let's see, let me get a set up here. Now I'm gonna make myself not tiny. Probably would have been easier to just start the stream in here, but I had to do a few bubbles first. So, looking at fractions in different bases here, one seventh is so wacky here. It's fun that it has this trait where if you multiply that string by two, you get that, multiply it by four, you get that, and all these different, or no, by three gets you that, and all these different patterns. But, and it does relate to how if you multiply it by seven, you get point infinite nines, or if you multiply the fraction by seven, get one. It's sort of an example that point infinite nines is one. So when we look at these different fractions, base six has way less of a problem with one seventh. Base six, look, it, its sevenths are a two digit string repeating way simpler than that base 10 one where we have a six digit string repeating. And let's look in general at how base 10's fractions are. We got nice and easy and we're already off to a bad start. It's only repeating one digit, but it's like the second most common fraction, arguably, would be like one third. It's like the next unit fraction you want to cover after one half. And we need an infinite repeater for it. We, it doesn't <laughs> just have like in base six, one third would just be 0.2 and two thirds would just be 0.4. So... We're off to a bad start for base 10. And if you keep going, it's like, okay, I'm all right with fourths. I'm pretty good with fifths. I'm bad with sixths. I am terrible with sevenths. Pretty good at eights. 
are right at nines. And then, of course, its own base it can do. Eleventh's pretty wacky. Twelfth's pretty bad. Thirteenth's awful. Now, if we go to base six, not all of them are neat. Like, elevenths and thirteenths are kind of bad in base six, too. But how often do you need elevenths and thirteenths? We, we shouldn't be optimizing our base for elevenths and thirteenths. We should... Even just the simple fact that base 10 is good at doing fifths, but not thirds. It's like, do you really think we're using fifths more than thirds in reality? Maybe because we force our society to, but things come in threes more than they come in fives in nature. It's a more smaller, fundamental, common number. So if we look at different bases, we can have fun on this tool by being like, what's my base? What's my denominator? For example, let's say one seventh was kind of wacky in our base. What are the sevenths in different bases? Here's what the sevenths look like in binary. It looks like they're repeating three digit strings. Here, it's a little longer. Um, and... And then base six, not only was it good at digesting the twos and threes, but it's not that bad at digesting the sevenths because that's one more than it. That's B plus one. It's also all bases are when you try and make them digest the number one less than them, you're going to get this thing going on. Infinite ones for a fifth, infinite twos for two fifths, infinite threes, da da da. In fi uh, and in our base, in base 10, um, if we go to ninths, uh, we can see they could have also written nine ninths equals point infinite nines. It's true. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen and everyone. One is equal to zero point infinite nines. Uh, and this sort of shows a logic as to why. Someone's asked if I've thought of growing a really long beard, and I feel like I already kind of accidentally am. I've sort of procrastinated shaving and haircut for a long time. I had in the back of my head, normally I every couple months, I'll just let it go kind of long, and then every couple months shave them uh, a bit shorter. And I've had all sorts of lengths of hair over the years, and so we'll see. But in this time, I kind of got stuck in my head that I was like, well, I'm going to get a a big haircut for grade negative two. I'll definitely clean up when grade negative two hits. And I think since I had that in the back of my head, I just put it in my head as like, okay, my next haircut's gonna be in March when I'm preparing for grade negative two. So it might just get a little more chaotic over the next month or two, and then cut myself nice and clean when grade negative two hits because we have to restart the modular cycle. And we still will have like more clocks and dice than we started the first cycle with. Things will accumulate and grow, but um, some things will reset, you know, we'll have a new desk and stuff. So, like I've mentioned before, we are near the end of grade negative one of combo class and grade negative two is next and that will be hitting at the beginning of April. And there won't be a long break, but March might be a little more sporadic or a little more of me resetting, maybe drop some behind the scenes stuff more and fix up for grade negative two. For January and February, we got some real cool episodes and some fun stream ideas planned. Uh, the episodes on the main channel that I'm working on, the one I'm filming this week is a long requested one from my fans. Well, I mean, I, I've only been making the show for like a year, but it's been requested uh, many times, which is I sort of set up a trilogy within this first grade negative one where I love making episodes about strange ways of counting numbers, strange numeral bases. And I wanted in grade negative one to hit sort of a trio of three of the first ones, weird fun ones, which is negative bases irrational and fractional bases. And then this one's sort of the combo of them. Imaginary and complex bases. Sounds just like a different thing. 
but it has traits of getting traits of the negative bases and the irrational bases in this new one when we're going to look at and it's going to be like another week before it's out on the main channel but uh the next episode will be this base 2i and base i minus one those are the two main bases we're covering and they are pretty awesome um so to yeah whoever said they remember wolfram alpha the wolfram alpha site itself is a good calculator and a good resource um i use it as like if i need to look up an equation like uh, it's my online calculator go-to but this is a whole new discovery i made where this thing called the uh wolfram demonstrations like i downloaded this thing called wolfram player for the computer that lets me get ones that wouldn't show online in this zone called wolfram demonstrations where i'll pull up that page in a little bit after we see the ones i've already downloaded where a bunch of people have contributed these cool things like this they've made so before we go to the next one let's just see how base six actually is pretty dope on its slow fractions so like um oh no wait i was doing base two denominator six base six denominator starting there half that would be super easy to remember third would be super easy to remember it would be this cool magical thing where one half would be 0.3 and one third would be 0.2 there would be this little mirror pair and um then you get up to fourths not bad get up to fifths that's expected as we saw when the denominator is one less than the base uh, and of course it'll be easy for the base number one higher than the base, which was seven, it's not that bad. Strings of two digits repeating could be worse. One eighth, not bad. One ninth, not bad. One tenth, not too bad. So base six is far superior. As we go down the number line, there are far more fractions that it's easier for. And that includes the earliest ones too. So not only are there more fractions on any chunk of number line that base six is better than base 12, but it includes the most important ones like one third. So people are gonna have to drop this one fifth thing. Unless you wanna count in base 30 or 60, we're gonna have to pick three over five. Someone's wondering who helps with filming my videos. And I actually have a variety of friends and camera people who have helped. Um, currently the main person who's been filming a bunch of them is my friend Carlo who I hire and who helps me with those ones and I also have a friend Johnny who um, helps me with some filming and a couple of my other friends too and if you look at the main channel episodes uh, I put credits at the end for whoever filmed those sometimes a different name at the end and for bonus videos sometimes the person doesn't want to be credited just like a random friend was around or something or sometimes in the bonus videos you can see in the description who filmed it um but i'm still somewhat assembling a combo team but a lot of the camera work you will see are my uh is my boy carlo right now so is my boy johnny and some other friends uh someone's wondering does the fact that the number less than our base 10 is a perfect square produce any fun consequences great question the fact that the number one less than our base is threeven gives it the digit sum traits for threeven numbers where threeven numbers have a digit sum that's threeven however that wouldn't be as good as if our base itself was threeven instead of one more than a threeven because then it would just have an easier rule it'd be like evens like if it ends in a threeven it's threeven so uh we get interesting things from being one more than three and uh Maybe I'll have to look a little more into what parts of it are related to the square aspect. That's a good question. One of the first episodes on the Combo Class main channel is about the number nine. And it's why I have what I now call an upside down six, because six is an even cooler number. It's why I have an upside down six spray painted right outside my window on my house, uh, because I spray painted a nine for the episode. But now we're calling it an upside down six. So in one of the, that's one of the 
like the first non-intro episode on the main channel, I went all into why, not exactly the fact that it's a square, but what B minus one can do in a base as far as these super crazy divisibility superpowers. You guys want to see a crazy superpower? And it's going to relate to the number nine, but it's, don't get fooled that this means nine or 10 is extra cool. We could do this in any base. It relates to it being B minus one. So you guys want to see uh, this crazy trick? Um, let's just open Wolf from Alpha. If I take any number composed of different digits and then I subtract, well, okay, let's make it a little shorter and make a bigger digit at the front, but any number and then itself rearrange the digits anyway. So I'm just like randomly rearranging these digits. So any two numbers composed of the same digits rearranged, um, we take the difference, we add the digits of the result, that gives us 14, 15, 20, 27. That's not one digit yet, so we add the digits of the result, the di 27's digits add to nine, and that will happen any time. Any multi-digit number you pick with different digits in it, rearranged, subtract the smaller from the bigger, Keep adding the digits till you're down to one number. It's always nine. But that's not a power of nine. That's a power of B minus one in whatever base you count in. Um, and yeah, the Babylonians did use base 60 to a degree. I think I've read some things about they may have used it as sort of a mix of base five and base 12. I'm not sure if this is the Babylonians, but some base 60 societies... Uh, sort of treated it like this hand is five fingers and these 12 joints that you have on this hand on the fingers that you could signify with the thumb, 12 joints there, um, are 12 and they would sort of multiply those. So I think some of the 60s isn't really as much based on 6 times 10 as based on 5 times 12, strangely. Um... Yeah, someone's mentioning the repeating decimals in one seventh have an interesting property. Yeah, numbers like that, one seventh in our base is called a long prime, and it's also something that contains what's called a cyclic number. And I made a short about cyclic numbers if you guys want to look it up, but um, mostly about that one, about the one seventh one. But I will do a full episode someday about all the patterns of cyclic numbers. Because uh, there, it's not just one seventh that does that. There are other cool examples. And thank you all for the comments. Um, looking down here, um, I have not seen that video someone mentioned about base neutral system, but maybe I'll check it out. Um, and someone says I should show the progression of grades with my crazy hair and beard. If you mean the progression of like, I keep growing it so it's longer in each grade, that's not how it works because there is some resets in the grade. Each year, it's like a seasonal cycle and we'll actually see seasonal stuff like rain hitting at certain times. But we're gonna have a seasonal cycle that occurs that is, um, happens per grade. So most grades, I will look different at the beginning and then progress throughout it. So uh, let's see, we have a lot of nice comments. Thank you all. And why don't we pull open another one of these cool charts? Because this isn't the only fun one we can deal with. I got a lot of cool demonstrations here, and these are the names of some of them. For example, we have a prime detector thingy. Now here's how this works. This is the most classic way of looking at which numbers could be prime. You take a list of the numbers and you say two isn't, one's separate. You say two, uh, we haven't crossed it off or anything, so we're going to call it a prime. Then I cross off every second number. 
And then I'm like, okay, three's not crossed off yet. I'll circle that and cross off every third number. And I'm like, okay, four's already crossed off. Skip it. Five's not crossed off, so I'll circle that and cross off every fifth number. And here, what they do is they let you do it one stage at a time. So, um, if I look at, and let me move my face to the other side. If we look at our primes here, um, what they've done here so far is just kill the multiples of two except for two itself. The ones that are still maybe a prime are orange, but they've already, they eliminate one because they decide that's e easier for our definitions if it's not a prime. And then they have eliminated every second one. Now let's make this array wider. But the coolest thing about this array is that the height, let's make it as wide as we can. Like why not make it as tall as we can? But for the width, this will radically change things as I go to different widths. We can already see that on some widths, all the ones that were even getting killed were in a line. In others, it's not. So how's that going to change when we go to different ones getting called? And we're going to start with base 10 looking. Here's if we delete all the even numbers and our appearance looks kind of base 10 like. Now we're going to delete all the three vins apart from three. And now we're left with these. And now when we delete all the multiples of five, we, apart from the first row, which the first row is always going to have some extras there, we only have four rows they can come in. And this is showing us that already we know that anything that ends in a two, four, five, six, eight, or zero can't be prime if it's more than one digit. Now, to go further, how many primes would we have to kill off to check this amount? Well, this amount is 310. We would need to check the primes up to the square root of that. So if we check all the primes, say, up to 20, we'd definitely be set because any number less than 400 that has that isn't prime would have some factor in its pair equal or less than the square root of that. So we only really need to go up until we've checked like 20 primes and then we'll have covered even if our chart goes this high. Killing off next the 7s and the 11s, the 13s and the 17s. And that's enough here. They only made my list as far as we needed to go, I guess. So for this size, all we needed to go to was 17. So these are the prime numbers, the orange ones, in this range. Now, in our base 10 system, they look a bit neater than if we had counted in, and really it's not changing the base the numbers are written in, but it's giving us a lot of traits about the base, like they're sorted by digit right now for our base 10 system. But if I make the width 11, now it's like sorted in what the last digit would be in base 11. And since 11's a prime itself, this is sort of chaos. This would not be that easy to prime hunt in. So 10 was easier than 11. It had four tenths of its columns equals two fifths of its columns as potential primes. But what about other ones? Well, 12 has four twelfths of its ones meaning one third of the spots are where the primes have to be, which would be better to prime hunt in. It's easier to know, oh, none of these are primes. The primes must be hiding in just one third of the realms. And base six ties that. It has two out of the six are where the primes could live. One third of the realms for past one digit. And so base six or 12 have way easier prime related patterns and you don't really get anything extra with 12. If we look at it here, we're seeing it's like the ones that are one more than a multiple of six or one less than a multiple of six. 
And if we look at the width being 12, it's actually sort of just like that doubled. One more than multiple of six, one less. One more than that multiple of six, one less than the next. So 12 doesn't give us actually that much more exciting that six didn't already give us. Six gave us the best ratio up to this point because two, it's like half of the spots could be prime. Here, one third of the spots can be prime. So pretty cool to see in the different bases where the primes live in a given range. So that's another one of these fun ones that we may fiddle around with more. Um, and let's check out another one. Here we got something similar to the Roots of Unity. Now, for those who haven't seen, one of my more recent episodes on the main channel was about if we put this Z on the number one. Because what this is asking is where are the nth roots for whatever n I set? So n is two now, so they're saying where are the square roots right now of this number. And right now this number is at three plus two i. And apparently the... Uh, I mean, it, it's not exactly there, but apparently the square roots of 3 plus 2i are about where those points are, about like 1.8i plus, a, or I mean 1.8 plus half an i or something around that, you know? So if we want to see the roots of unity, that was that episode talking about what are the secret square roots of the number 1. Like I have a dot on itself here and I have a dot on negative 1. What if I ask about the fourth roots? Well, now I get i to the... Oops, no, z has to stay there. i to the fourth power gives us that. Negative one to the fourth power gives us that. Negative i to the fourth power gives us that. And that to the fourth power gives us that. Those are the fourth roots of unity. And if we go back to three, these are some fun under... Ooh, no. These are some fun underrated points, sometimes known as omega. And this one they just usually call omega squared, because it is. So um, these are some super fun underrated ones. And if I go up, I see all the roots of unity. There's the fifth roots of unity approximately, because he's about at one. Sixth roots, seventh roots, eighth roots, and so on. And then it lets me see what are the roots of slightly weirder stuff. Like what are the uh, roots of two these are all the weird roots of two of different sorts what are all the roots of one plus i hmm interesting what are all the roots of i hmm. so a lot of these are pretty cool fiddling around with them lets us envision a lot of the topics we like to talk about in new ways so, shout out also to the people who put these ones up. This one was contributed by this guy. Um, and what about the last one we did? This one was contributed by this guy. So, shout out to these people who made these available for people who like to think and work around and fiddle around with fun puzzle-like things like me and maybe some of you. Now we got a few more I downloaded, but there's such a crazy list of these that it's just unbelievable how many of these we'll be able to uh, fiddle around with over time. But a few others that I already downloaded here include, well, we got good old modular arithmetic tables. These are hard to beat. We got our addition tables for different mods. We got our multiplication tables for different mods. And this is showing us some more reasons why base six would be cooler than base 10. That table, kind of sloppy and confusing. That table, nice. Now, remember how our fractions in base six were easier? Well, what this tells us is that if you multiply two numbers in base six, Figuring out times tables would be easier. Uh, this is like the last digit of a times table. And we can see it has a much simpler fluctuation than the way this one was stacked. So base 12 also again 
better than base 10, but in my opinion, kind of a wannabe base 6 that doesn't add that much new and gets a little clunkier. Hello to everyone who is joining, and let's move from this one to another fun one, because we've already talked about mod tables a bunch, and the next one, but now we have them ready to go whenever. Now I don't even have to look them up online. There's like on an app on my computer, um, so thank you to this person for making these tables, and these are now available whenever we need to talk about mod stuff. Kind of weird how it looks like you see like a circle like region there from like the one digits to two digits changing. You guys see like a sort of circle like shape in the middle from the one digits to two digits having this zone. Interesting. So um, why don't we now look at a fun one that's what's up with factorials? Well, if you have, this gives a little explanation. If you have a really long factorial, it's going to be hard to write the whole number. But they're going to tell us the first digits of it, how many random other digits were in between, and how many of the last digits were zeros, and what was the last digit before the zero. Pretty random here, but we can set whatever number we want. So no millions... But how about we'll go 4,000 factorial has that at the beginning and has exactly 999 zeros. That's kind of cool. 4,000 factorial has 999 zeros. Now, how would you figure out yourself how many zeros were at the end of a factorial? Well, in our base, for them to have zeros at the end, that means products of twos and fives to get those zeros. And there's going to be more twos flying into this prime factorization buildup clump uh, so that it's going to have enough twos to cover all the fives already. So it's really going to be based on how many fives get introduced in the numbers multiplied up to there for how many zeros there are. So there are 999 factors of five that went up to there. That doesn't mean there's just 999 multiples of 5, because some count multiple times. 25 gives you two factors of 5. 125 gives you three factors of 5. So we passed some numbers here that gave us multiple 5s at a time. So you'd have to count, basically, how many multiples of 5 add a 0, how many multiples of 25 add 2, how many multiples of that add that. And so... Uh, that would be 999, apparently. Let's try another random number, like 10,000. It's hard to get these. These are tiny. Come on, 10. Okay. So that has 2499 zeros at the end. Let's see just the first few, how the zeros grow. You see how, like... No zeros. When we hit five, we already had a two in the mix, so we get our zero. We're going to get another zero when 10 hits at the end. And then we're going to get another zero when 15 hits. And then another zero when 20 hits. And then we're going to get two zeros when 25 hits. Someone's wondering the largest factorial humanity is computed. Uh, I'm not sure. Probably changes yearly. And you could, you know, compute traits about something without having it stored. So storing a large factorial is sort of, I guess, if you mean compute, like we need to have the whole number stored somewhere, I guess we would need, um, I'm not sure. Factorials get big very quick. Um, there's other ones with factorials that I saw in this demonstrations project zone that we may check out in the future. But for now, let's try just a kind of more fun, random one that I thought was kind of neat. This one, just about colors. It's like an optical illusion. So also shout out to uh, this stuff. So the inner squares have the same color. 
Now, let's adjust the left square's outer color. The inner squares are not changing color during this process. Doesn't it kind of look like the inner squares are changing color on that left side? Well, let's change both these squares back and forth a bit. So at no point in this are the inner squares changing color yet. None of this has made any of the inner squares change color. Now let's make the middle squares change color. But the middle squares are the same color as each other, so they're going to both be changing together. So, yeah, they look kind of different at different, they look different colors, kind of. So our eyes trick us based on the background. We are evolved to try and put things in context and put them into their background and their surroundings. And it actually can trick us sometimes because we, you know, miss the forest by trying to put it in the trees. And someone's wondering, similarly to the largest prime number known, and the largest prime numbers, um, I mentioned this in my episode about hyper 11s on the main channel, are uh, this type called Mersenne primes, that all the largest primes we've discovered are one less than a power of two. And those end up being strings of only ones that I call hyper 11s in binary. So those strings of only ones in binary that happen to be prime are easier to check and prove the primeness of. So we've scored big on some of those. If you look at the list of the top 10 biggest primes, it's like somewhere from eight to 10 of them are this Mersenne variety. Um, people are wondering about advice for an undergrad student. Um, I mostly recommend trying to just take a lot of your own personal notes and investigations, play around with numbers and draw connections between different things you've found and to read a lot and maybe, you know, watch videos and read mixed and take notes about things, but try and see the combos between the different things you're doing and try and force yourself to play around with them and explore a little bit yourself. Uh, but I don't know, maybe I'll make more advice videos at some point. Um, and someone's mentioning it may also relate to our eyes are built to be sensitive in different lights. That's also true that in particular of adjusting to a background, this may be telling my eye, the lighter one to like squint more or something compared to the darker one. So that's always interesting. I love optical illusions. I actually have some books of optical illusions just for fun. Here's one that's literally just a book of optical <laughs> illusions that I bought used because I was like, that'll be fun. And you just get all sorts of random things in there. And my favorite type of optical illusion book that I've done a bunch and I like to just keep around for when I hang out with friends are those magic eyes. Those stereograms where those images where you like bend your eyes weird and like look beyond it and get like almost cross-eyed and then you see a 3D thing. You know those? Those are pretty neat. So uh, I have a couple of books of those around somewhere too and uh, you can design your own ones online. So maybe sometime at the end of an episode I'll put one of those magic eyes and you have to like flex your eye weird at it and then you'll see a 3D clock or something. So those are fun. Let's see if we can pull up one here, maybe. Um, so we're going to get rid of these for now. I do love playing with them. And we're going to look at... I'm going to go back over here. And let's try... I'll go small so we can look at a magic eye real quick. So, hope for, okay, what if it's like a really offensive image in one of these? What if one of these gets my stream taken down? So, okay, I apologize in advance if there's something horrendously offensive hidden in this in 3D. Alright, so let's try and do this, folks. Here's how you do it. You gotta, like, look beyond it. It sounds weird, but you gotta, like, 
Flex your eyes and look through it. And let's see. Trying to get it. Do I look cross-eyed when I'm doing it? I wonder. I'm like flexing my eyes in the way to try and get it. So I wonder if I look super cross-eyed. Can't really tell what this one is. Can anyone get it? I might need to try a different one. Um, let's try. Whoa, what's going on there? Stop. Okay. How about this? Let's try this. No, 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 no. I don't want some dumb article. I want the image. All right. Whoa, okay, yeah, that popped out right away. So this is showing lions. There's like this baby lion cub in the bottom right, and then there's like a lion or tiger in the front, and then like this big old lion in the back. Um, and there's like some tree-like things in the back. Can anyone else get this? I hope you can get it, because it's really cool. You can like flex your eyes and see a 3D image. Also, let me know. I, I don't know. Am I cross-eyed right now, or does it look normal? Because I'm looking at it in the 3D way. Okay, now I'm back. Now I'm looking at it the normal way. Um, so, these things are pretty awesome. We will probably have to, uh, at some point, throw some of these into episodes as a fun little Easter egg in the credits or something. Uh, one last little picture or fun fact that you gotta move your eyes to try and hack into. Um, so those are always fun and we'll try one last one. All right, this one looks like either a plane or a bug. It's like a bee, I think. Yeah. Cool, I love bees. Or it might be a fly, but Looks kind of bee-like. Yeah, that's a good old honeybee or something. I think. Anyone else getting honeybee from this? To anyone who can't do it, you got to try and figure it out someday because it's really cool. It looks like right now like a flat sheet. But if you look at it right, it looks like you're looking through a mirror. The flat sheet is a wall in the back. And in between that, you see these little like clay things almost. Someone's thinking fly on this one. Yeah, kind of fly-like. I don't know. I'm rooting for it to be a honeybee, but it does look a little fly-like. Okay, so those are fun. You know, you can make your own. Um, let's try and do that. I think this is a site. Maybe I have... Okay. But what if I want to draw my own? No, that's Gallery. Text-based. Let's draw one. Text. Combo class. And generate desk. Now what do I do? And we'll put it on red fire. Um, okay, I don't know if I trust this. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about this. Is this the one? Is this a combo class now? It does. It's hard to read, but it says combo class. Yeah, maybe I need a bigger font size or something. It does technically say combo class. Wait, now I lost it. I need to make it smaller or something. Wait, am I am I crazy? It does say combo class, right? Someone says, does being blind in one eye make it harder to see? I have bad news, but I think if you are blind in one eye, it might not work, unfortunately. I think it requires the weird double depth thing. 
So, unfortunately, uh, this might not be something you are able to enjoy. I'm sorry about that. Um, but it relates to the eyes having to interact in a weird way. There's other weird optical illusions you can do with your eyes. Like, have you ever, when you were younger, like, you look through, like, a tube in the right way and you can, like, see a hole through your hand and stuff. Because our eyes are kind of pointing different ways. Um... But yeah, I hope that um, some people were able to uh, tap into this 3D realm. Okay, there we go again. It does say combo class. I wasn't crazy. Okay, maybe I was crazy separately from that, but it does say combo class. So, uh, those are always fun. And let's just pause and chat for a minute. No, not that. Not my Zoom my um going bigger so um let's pause and chat for a bit and i might wrap up the stream pretty soon but maybe i'll show an example of what other demonstrations we might try later i still am going to do a music based stream one of these days soon but i got carried away today with these little demonstrations and let me um, see right here which ones uh, look interesting. So if we look under math, I'll just show you an example of all the crazy stuff you got going on here. Um, here is like, let's say I want to know about number theory. Let's say I want to know about number bases. Look at all these crazy interfaces. Now, some of them you can even do online. Other ones, it'll ask you to uh, get the program like I got. But, like, let's try 27 coins balance puzzle. Maybe that one works right here. So, yeah, this one works online, I think. It's just loading. So, 27 coins balance puzzle. 26 coins weigh the same, and one counterfeit coin weighs less than the others. Determine the counterfeit coin using a balancing scale with the least number of tests. Can you do it with only three tests? And the way we would have to do that is to put... I'm not sure how to move them, but I'll describe it. We put a third of them in one, a third of them in the other, and skip a third. And then we know either one is heavier, or if they're equal, the skipped third was the one. And we keep doing that a few times. And this will show up in an episode about, ironically, numerical bases sometime. And the reason they put this in the numerical base category here is because this is relates to this base called balanced ternary, where you use ones, zeros, and negative ones in a way. Kind of relates to just ternary too. But other similar variations of puzzles like this, um, a slightly different one will be in an episode of mine, and I already did a short that was very similar to this, but there's a slightly different weighing puzzle I'll make an episode about someday in the future about balanced ternary as a cool base. But for now, we're doing base 2i next. Maybe less practical than balanced ternary, but super cool amount of superpowers and abilities. So, um, Someone said, Super Secret Demotro Ukulele Stream. I do actually play ukulele. I do actually have ukulele students. But my stream first, what I'll do probably as the first music stream, because it's already lined up when my face is in the corner right here, is make some beats from scratch on GarageBand, a simple programming software. And programming a simple little song is a good example of a lot of music theory stuff at once. So we'll be doing that before long. But today I decided to go into this realm of these cool little interfaces, some little contraptions to play with. And if anybody finds any ones, they can look through here, this Wolfram Demonstration Project. And if they find any that they want to see my opinion on or want to see me play around with in a stream someday, uh, you can let me know in a comment if there's any cool ones I should keep my eye out for. 
but I know for sure I'm going to be having some fun digging through these and seeing if any of these are worth including in any future streams. Um, so a lot of fun stuff here. Uh, as well as we got a little bubble contraption time. And I think I'm going to wrap up this stream in a moment. Feel free to leave any other thoughts and comments or anything. It was just a little one hour-ish stream today to check out a few little fun visuals. Um, but I will be back for another stream on one of the next couple days sometime quite soon. And... Um, to anyone who missed the early stuff here, you can always rewatch some of the stream or the last ones. We always get up to some fun antics. And thank you all so much for joining me. I will be back again. Uh, I don't know. Still don't have a strict schedule. Still have a lot of random stuff, but probably tomorrow. So um, until then, hope you have a combo day. I hope that I see my cat soon. None of them popped in the window this time but I'm going to go hunt them down and make sure they have enough pets. And I will catch you all next time. So, love you all so much, and...